Hi, this is Mr. Cardoso and this is video lesson 4. The purpose of this program is to explain the idea of variables and three main types of variables. So we have an integer or int for short and the Java command is int and that uh, what we can store in ints are integer numbers uh, so they can be positive or negative but no decimals are allowed. So some examples are negative 5, 7 and 0 are all examples of ints doubles allow you to store any type of number so they're more flexible um, so you can have decimals so for example 3.1415 um, which I, you otherwise know as pi um, negative 6.5 so again doubles can have positive and negatives as well but uh, they're also allowed to have decimals and 0 and 3 which are also integers but they can also be stored in double variables finally we have string and they're used to store words or letters. So, for example, hello, um, C, or Steve Nash, for example, uh, the best point guard in the history of the NBA. Um, we have open and close uh, quotations around each of these, and that's what indicates that it's a string. Okay, we'll also look at how to output these variables. Now, Java has many more types of variables than just these three, but those are the main three that are going to get us through most of the course. So, Let's go ahead and write some program code and we start with our class and let's call this one intro to variables. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to open the class and then we have to close the class of course just like before and we need public static void main string args open the main method and then close the main method. Okay, so again I should be make sure I'm one indentation level deep here and then here another indentation level deep. So this is where I'm going to write my program code. So variables are used, think of them as empty boxes at the beginning at least until you put something inside. So they're placeholders, another way of thinking about it. Um, when we don't know what the value is or when we're asking the user for a value we can often store that inside of a variable to keep the place. So for example let's say I want to know about the user's age. So let's declare a variable called age and that's how we do it. We put the type and then we'll put our variable name. When you're naming variables again um, it should always be a lowercase first letter. Okay. So use a word and it should be descriptive of what it's storing. So here I can put a comment that says um, stores the user's age. Okay. There we have it. Okay. Um, then we can say, for example, so that's going to store the user's age. Right now it's going to be an empty box, so it's a placeholder um, where we're going to later put that age inside of that box. Let's make another type of variable. Let's call it double um, price or double um, weight. So that could be, for example, the user's weight. So we're going to call that one double because we can put decimal values. For age, it's going to be an integer, we're not going to put double values, but for weight, we might be able to put um, decimal values in. So we can say stores the user's weight, so stores the user's weight, there we have it. And then we have, um, let's just for completion, let's make the last one, string, and let's call it name. And this variable is going to store the user's uh, name, first name, let's put first name. So we're describing what we're doing. Sometimes if you name your variables um, appropriately, you don't need to necessarily put these comments in. Um, so we want to avoid variable names where we are just calling this A, B, and C because then we don't know what those variables represent. So good programming style um, would is, is the variable name represents what it is actually storing. Okay, if you need to, to um, have more than one word in a variable name. So for example, let's say we wanted to put age in years. Again, we cannot put spaces. That's not allowed. It's going to be considered to be three separate things. So in order to put them together, we put age in years like so. 
So very similar to the programming style we used to name the class, the only difference is there was a rule that I'd mentioned before. For variable names, the first letter must always be lowercase, and then the beginning of the subsequent words should be capitals. So that's just a slight difference from this one where we capitalize the first letter of every word. Okay? This is called camelback format because it looks like the humps on the camel's back. You know, this is the uh, rear end of the camel, which doesn't have a big hump. And then you have the, the, the humps on the camel's back. So that's why it's called camelback format. Okay, so we can line these up nicely and it looks a little bit better. Okay, so we've declared variables, we've created empty spaces for them, but we haven't put anything into those variables. So now we can use assignment statements. So I can say these are assignment statements. Assignment statements allow you to put things into the variables. Now, in another video, we'll look at how to get information from the user to put them into these variables. But right now, we're just going to put them in ourselves. So I can put here age in years equals 17. So for example, that's going to put 17 into this variable age and years. Now one thing you have to make sure certain is that this type matches this one. Okay. So assignment statements always go from the right to the left. It looks at the right hand side, evaluates it, and puts it into this space or placeholder in the left hand side. Okay. Um, we can say weight equals, um, let's say, 130 pounds. Um, so that's going to take the 130 and put it into weight. Okay, so again, um, even though you might say, well, 130 is an integer, yes it is, but remember that doubles can store integers or decimals, so I can put 130.45 something that I wouldn't be able to do here without a compiler error. Okay. And then finally I can say string oh sorry, I saw it already declared. So name equals um, and let's put here for example Steve Nash. Oh it's his first name, so let's put Steve. Okay. So there we have it. We've actually uh, put these values into these variables. So we go ahead and compile this now. Again, it's going to say, okay, you got to name it. Intro to variables, intro to variables, same class name as file name. And now it's going to complain. Duplicates, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to put the string there. Let's get rid of that. It's complaining because I put string there and I've already declared the variable. So this is where I declare the variable. And once I've declared it, then I shouldn't try to declare that same variable again. Okay, so now um, I've put these uh, v values in. Let's try to compile it again. I fixed that up. Uh, it's found some warnings for me. And it says the local variable name is never read. So warnings are, are not stopping your program from compiling. <coughs> so you can ignore these um, for the most part. You might want to read them just to make sure that everything's okay, but I'm going to ignore these. So now I'm going to uh, press run and you can see that the program does nothing. Well, it does do something. There's just no output. Okay, so we've created these variables and we've put things inside of those variables. So now, um, let's just play around with this. Let's try to put 0.5 here, just to see what type of compiler error I get. So I press compile here, and you can see I'm going to get an error. It says type mismatch, cannot convert from double to int. So again, from right to left, this is a double, because it has a decimal and it's trying to put it in age and years which has been declared up here as an int so there's two ways of fixing this we can get rid of the decimal or i can change this to a double and then it would be okay to have a decimal so let's just get rid of the decimal but i just wanted to show you what kind of error you have what about this one if i take this 0.45 out will it complain that this is an integer just compile that 
And no, it doesn't complain. These are the same warnings that we got before. It doesn't complain that this is an integer because doubles can store integers and real numbers um, uh, with decimals. So this can be either way. Okay? And if you forget the quotation marks here, it's going to complain and say, hey, I don't know what this is. I think this is a variable because there's no um, quotation marks. So let's make sure we have our quotation marks in there. Okay? And then we can compile and then we're okay. So that's just ex experimenting with the types, making sure the types match. You can also, in assignment statements, do uh, expressions. So we can say, for example, 10 times 2. What that's going to do is it's going to do 10 times 2, again, from the right to the left. 10 times 2 is 20, so it's going to evaluate the expression and then put it inside to this variable. Again, um, you can also make sure you're following bed mass. So you can do bra brackets to, for example, change bed mass. So you can go 2 times 10 plus 2. So this is going to do 12 first times 2, which is going to give us 24. Um, if you leave out the brackets, it's going to give us 2 times 10, which is 20, plus 2, which is 22. So you can use brackets to change the order just like in math. Um, what you can't do is in math you could do that. Here you must put the, uh, this, the multiplication symbol, otherwise the compiler will complain. So again, in assignment statements, you can have expressions. It will evaluate those expressions first and then put it into the placeholder or variable in the left. Okay, so I compile that and run it. Again, nothing seemingly happening because we don't have any output statements. So this is all happening behind the scenes. So, if you want to show something back to the user, we can um, do output lines. So, system.out.println. So, system.out.println, open bracket, open quotation. And here we can actually say, okay, your age is. So, I want to give the message to the user that the age is that. Now, I want to actually put what's inside this variable and have that display on the screen. Well, the way to do that is I close quotations, I put a plus sign, and then I put age in years as follows. Okay? Um, what that's going to do is this symbol, the plus sign, acts as what we call string concatenation. So it, this is obviously a string because it's in quotations. And this part here, age in years, is a variable. It's actually an integer variable, but it's going to be converted into a string and then it's going to be joined with this string because of the plus sign. So in this value we're going to get 10 plus 2 which is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. So we're going to get 24 here. If I put age and years inside the quotations then you're going to get exactly that that comes out, age and years, those actual letters. Okay, so I compile this, and I'm just getting those warnings, and I press run, and I get your age is 24. So it's actually printing out what's inside this variable. And I can do that for the others as well. Your age is 24. And now we run it. So that's now you see we don't have any warnings. That's what it was complaining about that we never actually you know outputted or used these variables. So if I run it now, um, it's saying your age is 24, your weight is 130.45, and your name is Steve. So the the purpose of this lesson was to go through the three major types of variables, the types of data that we can store in those three types of variables, and making sure we don't try to put the wrong type of data in the wrong type of variable, and also how to output those variables to the screen. Okay, Join us next time where we will go through um, doing more evaluations and expressions with variables.